Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the 18 electron rule. The 18 electron rule is the transition metal equivalent of the octet rule. The octet rule is for 2p elements that have a valence orbital configuration consisting of an s orbital and 3p orbitals. These four valence orbitals can contain eight electrons, which means that these elements will be most stable when they achieve a noble element configuration of eight electrons around the central atom. This is a key driving force in the formation of compounds such as sodium fluoride, where electron transfer means that the fluoride and sodium ions both get full valences. The 18 electron rule can be more correctly called the effective atomic number rule, which is just indicating that the metal is trying to get a full noble element configuration. Extending this to transition metals, we have not only 1s and 3p orbitals, but 5d orbitals for a total of 18 electrons. The metal will be most stable when it has a noble element electron configuration of 18 electrons around the central metal. Remember how the octet rule works best for second row elements? Well, the 18 electron rule is similar in that it works great for some transition metal complexes, but not others. This doesn't mean that complexes defying the 18 electron rule cannot be stable though. What is the origin of the 18 electron rule other than the fact that it gives a noble gas configuration? Well, we can look at the electronic configuration of a typical octahedral complex, such as this sigma sigma complex. The d orbitals are t, 2g and eg. The s orbital is a1g and the p orbitals are t2u. We then have six sigma orbitals from the ligands, which can combine to form six bonding combinations, six antibonding combinations, and of course the d orbital from the T2g set is rigorously non-bonding in the sigma only case, and so putting electrons here would have no energetic penalty. Twelve electrons from the six sigma bonds represent the Lewis acid base interactions that hold the ligands to the metal, and we can add more electrons to the non-bonding orbitals. Doing this gives us 12 electrons in the sigma bonding orbitals and six electrons in the non-bonding orbitals, which makes 18 total electrons. And so we would predict that a D6 octahedral complex would be stable based on the 18 electron rule for a sigma only case. With the 18 electron or effective atomic number rule, how do we count electrons? There are two main methods of counting the electrons. Neither is right or wrong. The first is the donor pair or ionic counting method, and it is based on the idea that a transition metal ligand interaction is a Lewis acid base interaction, with each ligand donating at least two electrons to form the sigma bond. There are two types of ligands, neutral ligands, such as amines, carbonyl, and phosphines, and anionic ligands, such as cyanide, chloride, and hydroxide. How does the donor pair method work? The easiest way is to look at an example such as this octahedral complex, our fac tri aqua tri chloro cobalt, which is a sigma only complex. First, all the ligands are removed as full donor atom octet Lewis bases. So that means three waters are removed, which are neutral Lewis base ligands and three chloride anions, because to be a Lewis base, the chloro ligand must have its electron. The second step is to determine the charge on the metal after removing the Lewis basic ligands. There is no charge from removing three waters because they are neutral ligands, but when we remove the three chloro ligands, we leave by definition a plus three charge on the cobalt center, which is also the oxidation state of the metal center. The next step is to use the metal oxidation state to determine the number of metal D electrons. This can be from the number of electrons in the neutral metal minus the oxidation state from the periodic table. Cobalt is in group nine and the plus three oxidation state was previously determined, leaving six D electrons on the metal center, making cobalt D6. To get the total electron count or effective atomic number, the metal D electrons are added to the electrons donated by the Lewis basic ligands to give the total valence electron count. So for our complex, there are three water ligands, which will donate two electrons each for a total of six electrons. 
there are three anionic chloroligands also donating a pair of electrons, each to the metal, for a total of six electrons. The cobalt plus three has six d electrons. Therefore, the total for the complex is then six plus six plus six, giving 18 d electrons around the metal center. In conclusion, then, this complex is a D6 cobalt-3 complex and is an 18-electron cobalt species, which gives it a noble element configuration, obeying the 18-electron rule. Let's look at a more challenging example, pentaphosphine chloro iron dication, where a charge in the complex is being introduced, which we must consider. The procedure is the same. First, remove and identify the nature of the six ligands surrounding the metal center. Five phosphine ligands are removed, which are all neutral Lewis bases, and one chloride. For chloride to act as a Lewis base, it must be an anion. The charge on the metal after removal of the ligands must be accounted for too, so the removal of five neutral phosphine ligands does not change anything about the charge, and it remains unchanged. Then the next step is to remove the chloride anion. This means that the charge on the metal must be plus three. As the charge was plus two, then we removed a negative one charge, meaning that we must have a plus three oxidation state on the metal. The next step is to use the metal oxidation state to determine the number of metal D electrons. This will be the number of electrons in the neutral metal minus the oxidation state. From the periodic table, iron is in group eight and the plus three oxidation state was previously determined, leaving five D electrons on the metal center, making iron D5. To get the total electron count or effective atomic number, the metal D electrons are added to the, the electrons donated by the Lewis basic ligands to get the total valence electron count. So for the total electron count around the iron center, the contribution of the ligands needs to be totaled. There are five phosphine ligands, which will donate two electrons each for a total of 10 electrons. There is one anionic chloroligand, also donating a pair of electrons to the metal for a total of two electrons. The iron three has five D electrons. So the total for the complex is then 10 plus two plus five, giving 17 D electrons around the metal center. In conclusion, then, this complex is a D5 iron three complex with 17 electrons and it does not obey the 18 electron rule and does not have a noble element configuration, although it is still possible to form this and it will likely be stable. So that's the donor pair method, where every ligand is treated as a Lewis base two electron donor to the metal, though some ligands like the oxal ligands, which are negative two charge, donate four electrons and are four electron donors. The second method is the neutral ligand counting method. In this method, all the ligands will be removed as neutral fragments, meaning that the neutral ligands, such as amines, remain the same, but anionic ligands are now homolytically cleaved from the metal as one electron radicals. Looking at the two examples again, we'll let us see how the mechanism of counting changes. Here again, we have the incomplete name of our cobalt complex. We remove every ligand from the metal as a neutral species. The five water ligands come off as neutral waters. The chloride ligand comes off as the chloride radical. And because everything has been pulled off as the neutral species, the charge on the metal is zero and we are left with a neutral metal atom. The valence electron count can then be determined because the three waters donated a total of six electrons. The three chloride ligands donate one electron each for a total of three electrons. Cobalt is treated as a neutral atom and being in the ninth column of the periodic table, it natively brings nine electrons, which gives us a total of 18 electrons, just like the donor pair method did. In fact, we got here much faster than the donor pair method, but it is important to realize that we haven't gotten all the information yet as the oxidation state of the cobalt is not zero. To determine the metal oxidation state, we add the number of one electron donors to any charge on the complex. So there are three one electron donor ligands in our cobalt complex and no overall charge, again indicating a plus three oxidation state on the metal, the same result as our donor pair method. The oxidation state can then be used to get the D electron count at the cobalt center. Just like the donor pair method, the number of D electrons in the neutral metal minus the oxidation state tells us that this cobalt center is D6. Let's try our second example again with our pentaphosphine chloro iron dication. 
Again, we remove all the ligands as neutral fragments, removing five phosphines and one chloride, leaving a neutral iron zero atom, but don't forget that the two plus charge must be accounted for. Then we do the valence electron count, but we must be careful as if we add up all the electrons, we have more than 18 electrons. 10 from the phosphines, one from the chloride, and eight from the neutral iron give 19 electrons. Unlike the octetro, we cannot expand beyond the limit of 18 here, so if we get a total of more than 18, then we have failed to account for something, the complex does not exist, or we have made a mistake somewhere. Note that sometimes the 18 electron hard cap can be exceeded, but these are usually more complicated than those commonly encountered or contain delocalized electrons. Here we have 19 electrons because we mistakenly did not account for the two plus dicationic charge on the complex. Correcting for this removes two electrons and leaves a more plausible 17 electrons, the same as with the donor pair method. The oxidation state can be determined as the number of one electron donor atoms plus the charge on the complex. Again, we get that this is an iron three. Because it is iron three, we again get that it is a D5 metal complex. Summarizing the two methods then. The donor pair method counts every ligand as a Lewis base and emphasizes the things that are usually important to coordination chemists, the metal oxidation state and D electron count, which are important because they often control reactivity of the complex. The 18 electron rule doesn't directly control the reactivity of the complex and is just a method of determining if a complex has achieved its noble element configuration. The neutral ligand counting method emphasizes the effective atomic number rule, which is most useful for organometallic complexes, especially those organometallic complexes of very electron rich metals, those that appear on the right hand side of the transition metal series. Let's check comprehension.